Okay, so now that we have established this, um, this login page and functionality, let's talk a little bit about some of the best practices. Best practice one, take a look at these hard-coded strings over here. We have a return success, we have a return failure, and of course you can ignore the hard-coded strings in this line. This is just something that we've added for illustration. It should not be there in a real application. But then these, you know, could be there in a real application. You want to return a string as a return of this execute method. So there have to be strings. And uh, these are standard strings. You would typically have a success or a failure or a login or things like that. So it's not really recommended to have hard-coded strings over here. What we would typically have is like a private static string equals success and then of course replace this with that static string right so this is this standard java best practice not not really related to start stone anyway you would typically want to do this you would want to avoid hard coded strings now this will have to be done for every action of ours right so almost every action will need to have at least one string return type and uh, most of the times it would be success or failure or login or error or something like that so you would have to have this private string uh, static string in every action class so in order to avoid that you can actually implement an interface actually starts to provide two solutions one is it gives us an interface that we can implement and second thing it gives us a class that we can extend we can do either of the two uh, class is a bit more powerful interface is not really that powerful but then we can use either of the two. Interface was actually a requirement earlier, but then in the newer versions, you don't really have to implement any interface. If you notice here, our login action is actually a POJO. It doesn't really implement anything. It doesn't extend anything. There's an informal agreement that your action has a public string execute, because unless you have this, your action will not work. But then it's just an informal rule. It's not really an interface that you have to implement and then implement, you know, implement this method. But then implementing the interface will give you the advantage of you know, not having to declare this uh, static text. So let me go ahead and implement the interface this time. Implements action. Now action is imported from com open symphony x work 2. So again, we're not gaining a lot by implementing action. Uh, we'll talk about the class that I told you about. That's a bit more powerful, but just for demonstration, I'm going to implement the interface in this example, and then we'll look at the class in the next tutorial. So now that we have this action, we don't have to declare this. Just let's take a look at the action code. So this is the public interface action. So here you can see the static final strings declared, you have success, you have none, and actually you have good comments for each of them indicating what you could possibly use those strings for. You have an error, you have an input. An input is if you have uh, come to a place after a user submitted a form and you're not happy with the submission, you want to take the user back to the form, you redirect to input. Login, which is actually perfect in our scenario where you want to redirect the user uh, to a login page when the user session is not there or an incorrect user ID and password was entered, whatever it is, this could be used for a login page redirection. And then finally, you have a public string execute, which is the, you know, the informal contract that we've been adhering to. But then if we are, uh, you know, implementing the action, if we do not have that execute would get a compiler or not even a runtime. Okay, so that is, it's as simple as that. Implementing action does not really give us a lot. And then again, as I said, in the next, uh, maybe not in the next, but then in the subsequent tutorial, I will talk about uh, the class that we can extend and that's a bit more powerful. Okay, so now see, I've removed that static value, but then I can still use success. Now, in the case of a failed login, I need to return some other string. So let's take a look at what is a good fit. Like we saw, login is a very good fit. So that's what I'm going to use. So I will use login. So this will refer to the string. 
okay? The only change that we have to make is login is now a new string over here. So I will have to use this string in my start XML. So it's no longer failure, it is login, right? So because success is still success over here, but it was error before, now we have changed it to login. So it's it's really, you know, it's it's not really a hard and fast rule. You can use any string you want, but this is one best practice. This best practice will still hold good when we change this to uh, a class from an action. Okay, so we'll save this. That was the first best practice. Now onto the second best practice. Now let's open up our struts.xml here. So notice we have two packages. We have one package for login and one package for the default. This is fine because this is a, a very small application, but if you are working on an app that has a lot of packages and a lot of actions, this file can get really messy. So you'll have a whole lot of package declarations and you have a whole lot of actions inside those packages. So this can be a really huge file. So it is actually advised to split this up into multiple XML files. And uh, Struts allows this by having something called as an include. So you can include one XML file inside another Struts XML file. So the main XML file has to be called Struts.xml. So this is your base XML file. But this file can include other XML files. So We'll we'll try that in this uh, in this app. Not that it's required, but just to you know illustrate the way in which we can split up XMLs. We'll uh, take this package out, and uh, we'll have a different XML file for it. So this starts XML is in the source folder. So right at the source folder, I'll create another XML file. And I can call this login.xml. There's no restriction as for the name is concerned, but I'm just gonna call this this login. And this is actually, it has pretty much the same um, structure. So I can just copy the same thing and uh, paste it here, but then I'll have to remove this one. So what I'm doing here is this is another struts XML, but then it has a different name, of course, and then I've moved one of the packages from here to over there. So this package is the login package is in this XML, and the default package is in this XML. So all I need to do to refer to that is write a include tag. All right, so the include has one property called as the file. So the file would be the name of the file. So this name is login.xml. And that's it. So this is equivalent to having that declaration over here itself. So we're not gaining anything functionally. Only thing is we are uh, splitting this up into different files so that it's more manageable. So you can, in a real world application, have different files that are included in the main starts XML, but then they contain uh, the package declarations and the action declarations that are specific to, say, a particular business unit or a particular uh, nature of work. So you can classify it however you want. It is just a maintenance uh, feature. It doesn't add anything functionally, but it makes things a bit more organized. Okay, so this is the second best practice that I wanted to talk about. Now let's move to the third best practice. So in our application, in our tutorial finder application, we have a finder page. We have this search form JSP page. And uh, this is the page that the user sees after login. So in our login.xml, we have configured for a successful login to redirect the user to a search form.jsp. This is fine, but then let's say you're developing a menu system and you want to link to the search form.jsp in your menu. Uh, you would normally hyperlink to the root context slash search form dot jsp right and say so you are you have to give a url to the user you would give this url it would be something slash search form dot jsp now this is actually not recommended this is again another place where we can apply the standard best practice of having some kind of an alias this is this is similar to what we've seen in uh, in the case of servlets if you remember in the case of servlets the user does not actually enter the servlet class name the user enters what is called as the sublet name. So the sublet name acts as an alias for the actual 
class which has this outlet implemented. So it's kind of like uh, one layer of abstraction so that the user does not really see the class name and you can change the class name later but still retain the same servlet name. So this is somewhat similar. So if you have the JSP name in your uh, in your URL, say you want to change this, uh, change the name of this page, you say you want to change the search form to something else, search.jsp, that would mean that you would have to go to the user and ask them to update the URLs or bookmarks or whatever, or have a search form.jsp that internally redirects. So it's, it's kind of a messy solution. So you would want to make these changes transparent to the user. You would not want the user to find that out. So one way to do that is to have an alias instead of giving the URL directly as search form.jsp, have an alias and then the user accesses the alias and then you internally redirect to the actual JSP file. So the way we do this in Struts2 is to have a dummy action that redirects to the search form.jsp. Now, what exactly is a dummy action? What I mean by dummy action is you don't actually have to implement an action class just to do this redirection. Now think about it. If you have to have an alias for every JSP, that would mean you have to have a corresponding action for each and every JSP in your application that doesn't really do anything else. It just in the background redirects to a JSP file. So that is actually not required because that would be a huge overhead. So we can have, um, dummy action struts to provide us that. Now we'll implement one such thing and you'll understand what I mean by dummy actions. Now we'll take this search form.jsp. Now I don't want the you know the JSP to be linked directly in an external URL. Well this part is fine. Um, this action is fine. But then apart from this action, apart from the login scenario, say you want a bookmark to be made or you want the URL to be shared, you wouldn't want to give the search form.jsp you want to give a search form.action say and in the background that is redirected to a search form.jsp now let's implement this um, search form.action okay so i will i'll have uh actually i can keep this in the same package but this package is for login so i don't want to use the login package for this what i'll do is i'll have a new package in this stretch xml I'll call this search and it's in the namespace slash and um, now I need to define an action for the search form dot jsp so I'll call this search form okay and uh, the result would be in any case whether it's a success or a failure because we are not really doing anything we want the result to be search form.jsp so I can actually remove the name so this action is going to redirect to search form.jsp no matter what okay so now that that is done now here's the thing what's going to be the class right so we have to have an action class that does this redirection now since struts2 has this concept of dummy classes we don't actually have to implement an action class just to do a blind redirection. If you're not doing anything, we don't have any logic there. We don't really have to implement a class. So I can actually remove this class attribute. Okay. So this is actually, believe it or not, a valid definition of an action. So I am defining an action called search form dot action that always redirects to the result search form dot JSP and it does not have a backing action class. So this is what qualifies as a dummy action. So struts2 by default looks at input URLs which are search form.action and then redirects to search form.jsp. We don't have to actually implement action classes. So that way it's actually handy to have uh, that kind of a feature. You don't have to implement action classes for every JSP, you just have to have uh, an action name declared and then the redirection configured and starts to take care of the rest. Okay, so these are some best practices that you should try to implement in your struts to applications. So just to quickly recap, the first best practice was to um, implement an interface in your action or possibly to extend a class, which we'll see later. The second best practice was to 
try to split your package and action definitions into different XML files so that they're logically grouped together. And then the third best practice was to encapsulate your JSP links with dummy actions so that the user sees only the action, the user does not see the JSP and that leaves you free to change the JSP names later if required. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. See you in the next tutorial.